Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. We've got a number of folks still joining on to uh, this morning's opening ceremonies, and uh, we'll uh, we'll start here shortly. Thanks. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today for this, the 2021 Ohio Business Matchmaker. Uh, much like last year, this one is a little bit different in that uh, we've taken an event that took place in person and, and had a whole lot of hustle and bustle, uh, and we have now made this a virtual event. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, for our small business friends, uh, we've got a saying, uh, you know, it, it's important to work on your business, uh, not just in your business, and you're doing that today. Uh, the Ohio Business Matchmaker is about supporting you, about supporting small businesses, and about creating opportunity for small businesses enter, interested in entering and uh, successfully competing in the small business uh, marketplace in the federal, state, and uh, local government procurement markets. Well, good morning. My name is Jim Lapley. I am with the Ohio Department of Development, and I manage the state's Small Business Development Center program. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for joining us. Um, this, this event is about supporting small businesses, uh, and, and that's why we do this event. Um, to our returning participants, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, it's great to see faces and names, and uh, we can't wait to get back together in person. Uh, the one thing we do miss when we, we don't have these events in person is, is the success that we see uh, from the small businesses that are supported through the Ohio Business Matchmaker. Uh, every year, we have countless folks come up to us to talk about that meeting that led to uh, a further engagement and a relationship built that ultimately results in federal contracts, state contracts, and local government contracts uh, that ultimately support small businesses that create jobs here in Ohio. And uh, as long as we have those stories coming, we're going to keep holding this event. Uh, for those who are new to the matchmaker, welcome. Uh, again, uh, we hope this event is going to take a little bit of a, a different shape here in the future, uh, safety permitting. But we're excited to have you here with us. We want you to make the most of this event and uh, encourage you to continue that relationship even after this event. And finally, for our uh, prime buyers, for those uh, government purchasers or contracting officers, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us. Uh, this would not be an event without you, without the opportunity for you to reach out, to engage new businesses, to uh, identify new potential vendors for your supply chains. Um, we hope that this event uh, brings as much value to you as it does to our small businesses as well. Uh, we're extremely excited uh, to continue this event. We've got hundreds of meetings scheduled between small businesses and government buyers over the next two days. Uh, and I do want to thank the folks who helped make this event possible. So um, I'd like to thank the entire Ohio Business Matchmaker Planning Committee. Uh, it's not one individual or one organization that can coordinate an event like this. It really takes the collective efforts of multiple programs across Ohio uh, that support small businesses to make this event happen. So uh, on the development side with the Ohio Department of Development, all of our program staff within the Small Business Development Centers, the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, and the Minority Business Assistance Centers and all of their partners across the state, uh, dozens of organizations um, who are out there supporting small businesses every day. Uh, we'd also like to thank our, our largest partner, the US Small Business Administration. Uh, again, your efforts to help coordinate and bring to the table as many uh, government buyers as possible makes this event a success. So uh, with that, we're gonna hop right into things to make sure we keep on track and uh, make sure we don't eat into anyone's time or availability to, uh, to pitch their businesses. And uh, we've got a phenomenal lineup of panelists and speakers today. Um, I think it really speaks to uh, this event and it speaks to the support that is out there for the small business community, uh, given uh, some of the senior leaders that we have joining us this morning. Uh, we're gonna start this morning with Director Lydia Mahalik with the Ohio Department of Development. Director Mahalik was appointed to lead economic development for the state of Ohio by Ohio Governor Mike DeWine. 
Uh, in her prior life, uh, Director Mahalik was the 55th mayor of the city of Findlay, Ohio. She was the first woman to hold that city's top post. And as a mayor, she was a very strong proponent of small businesses, job creation, and improving customer services to residents. Uh, she also served as a grants administrator for the Hancock Regional Planning Commission, and that gave her a great perspective on economic development and how incentives can impact community and spur investments throughout Ohio. So with that, uh, Director Mahalik, thank you so much for joining us today, and I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Jim, appreciate it, uh, and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on behalf of uh, Governor Mike DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Husted, I wanna welcome you uh, to the 2021 Ohio Business Matchmaker. This is going to be a great event. We're gonna make the most of it. Uh, would, much, would much rather uh, be uh, with all of you uh, in person, uh, but uh, we're virtual uh, again this year. Uh, we're gonna come back uh, in person uh, very soon and we're gonna make it bigger and we're gonna make it better uh, the next time uh, we get together um, and excited uh, to be able to do that uh, very soon. Uh, thanks uh, to our event partner, uh, the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, without you, uh, we wouldn't be able to put this on and, and be successful. Thanks to uh, the planning team uh, and everyone uh, for helping uh, make this uh, a huge success uh, as well. Of course, this is the second year uh, that we're holding uh, this event uh, virtually. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, it's going to be efficient uh, and we're going to make uh, the best of it. Of course, it allows all of you uh, to meet uh, some business partners uh, without having to travel. Uh, but we're super confident uh, this, that you're going to find uh, that this is uh, some time uh, that is uh, well spent. Both today uh, and tomorrow, you're going to have the opportunity uh, to meet from buyers uh, from all levels of government uh, and uh, with some uh, pretty large uh, prime contractors. You know, all of these buyers represent billions of dollars uh, worth of contracts. Uh, that's a ton of opportunity. Uh, and today's one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtual meetings are gonna put you uh, in a position uh, to land one or two uh, or, or even more uh, of, these, of these contracts and opportunities. Uh, so thank you so much for taking uh, this time to grow your business uh, and ultimately, you know, uh, help grow uh, the state's uh, economy. Uh, you know, at Development, uh, our mission is as to empower uh, communities to succeed. And we certainly have a variety uh, of programs here uh, that can help you today and help position uh, your business uh, for a really bright uh, future. Um, the statewide small business development centers uh, have professional advisors who can help you uh, with uh, business planning. Uh, they can help you with marketing, with loan packaging, uh, and so much more. And quite frankly, uh, since the beginning uh, of the pandemic, all of these centers have experienced record requests uh, from folks and businesses just like yours. Uh, these centers uh, have staffed up. Uh, and they've hired contractors uh, to be able uh, to, to handle all of this extra work. They've been working really, really hard and, and businesses have been able to keep their doors open because of the assistance uh, they have received and they've been able to grow and pivot uh, and get better. Uh, and so I'm grateful uh, for all the work that's being done out there in the field uh, through our SBDCs. Our minority business assistance centers uh, do the same work uh, as our small business development centers uh, focusing on minority owned businesses and economically and socially disadvantaged businesses. And our uh, minority business development uh, division can also give you uh, access to loan programs and collateral enhancement funding uh, and bonding assistance that can also help you land uh, these uh, government contracts. And you know, our focus today uh, is on government contracts uh, and our procurement technical assistance centers or our PTACs uh, are experts uh, in that uh, area. And the advisors in those centers across the state uh, spend their time helping businesses get more uh, government work. Uh, so it's an all hands on deck uh, approach here at development and we have a ton of resources if you want uh, to start or expand your business uh, in a lot of different ways, including 
uh, international markets. Uh, and we've got a network of advisors uh, that help small and medium sized manufacturers uh, also improve their efficiency and their productivity, uh, which leads to profitability, uh, which is a really good thing. Uh, so you can learn more about these services uh, at development.ohio.gov. Early on uh, in the pandemic, uh, Governor DeWine and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Husted uh, recognized that there was a need uh, to help our state's uh, businesses overall. And so they created uh, the Office of Small Business Relief right here uh, within development. And the office serves as the administrator for federal funds that are awarded uh, to Ohio for small business support uh, and recovery. And we're currently administering four different uh, grant programs that target specific segments of our economy. We have the food and beverage establishment grant, the lodging grant, the entertainment venue grant, uh, and the new small business grant, which helps uh, businesses that open their doors uh, in 2020. Uh, our minority uh, division recently launched uh, two new loan programs for small businesses. We've got the Women's Business Enterprise Loan Program and we've got the Ohio Micro Loan Program. And you can learn more uh, about all of these at businesshelp.ohio.gov. Uh, you can also sign up uh, for our newsletter uh, that includes news about Ohio's response to the pandemic, our continuing response, and about opportunities uh, for businesses. And you can sign up uh, for that particular newsletter by sending an email to businesshelp at development.ohio.gov. A lot of information there, uh, but we've got a great team uh, that can help you uh, find out more and, and, and get information uh, to, to all of these programs. Uh, at development, uh, we're here uh, for you. Uh, we love the fact uh, that you're here today. Uh, we want you to learn more. Ohio small businesses are the backbone uh, of our economy uh, and of our communities. And we hope uh, that your day here uh, is super productive uh, and we can't wait uh, to do more uh, together. So have a great time today. Let us know uh, how we can be helpful and uh, we can't wait uh, to see each of you uh, in person very, very soon. Jim, I'm gonna kick it back to you. Have a great day. Great, thank you so much, Director. Yeah. Again, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join us this morning. And we yeah. will make sure that all of our participants uh, in the Ohio Business Matchmaker uh, get information on all of those resources uh, that the director mentioned. Uh, again, if this is your first time engaging with us, we want this to be the start of a relationship and we wanna make sure you maximize the, the tools and resources available to help you succeed. Um, so we're now gonna jump from the Department of Development to the Department of Defense. And we're very excited to have uh, Director Farouk Mitha, uh, the head of the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. Uh, Mr. Mitha currently serves um, at the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. As director, he oversees more than $140 billion of annual awards to small businesses. In addition, he assists the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Secretaries of Military Departments, Directors of Defense Agencies, and Major Commands in including small business planning and in, into the readiness of the department. Uh, these efforts aim to modernize and restore the nation's industrial commons through focusing on advanced manufacturing, applied research, innovative programs that align with small business capabilities uh, and with the DOD's future needs. Um, Mr. Mitha served the Obama administration previously as the senior advisor uh, to the director of the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs and as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Manufacturing and Industrial-Based Policy. Um, we're very excited to have him joining us here this morning. Uh, I won't go through your entire back, background, Mr. Mitha, um, but I do want to say we were very excited uh, to have you here in Ohio just a couple weeks ago, and I believe that was your first time uh, getting on the road um, to participate in engagements with uh, some Ohio small business uh, defense contractors and manufacturers. So just thank you for that. And again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you uh, so much, Jim. It's really a pleasure to see you again. It was really nice to meet you and, and others from the Ohio, well, you and the uh, Ohio T uh, PTAC members and others in Dayton a few weeks ago. Uh, I thought that was a great trip. It was my first trip, as, as Jim mentioned, 
uh, post or, you know, during COVID since I started this position. So I was glad to be in Ohio. I'm looking forward to coming back. I'm actually in the Midwest right now, joining you all from uh, Detroit, Michigan. So uh, spending a lot of time in this part of the country uh, and look forward to doing more. Uh, you know, I started back in February as the director of small business at DOD. And I came into a situation where I saw some good things and I saw some things that we needed to improve. Uh, you know, as a starter, we've met our small business goal for now eight consecutive fiscal years. And last year, the department spent over $80 billion on small business prime contracting awards alone. I thought that was great. We've seen small business permeate the culture of the department and our workforce and, and our acquisition workforce and, and program managers and others really believe that small businesses have a critical role to play uh, in, in our nation's military readiness. However, what I also saw, and we should hear me more about from some of my colleagues, is the decline of small businesses in our industrial base. And at DOD specifically, I saw that we had lost in the last decade 43% of our small business prime contractors. That's a, a massive decline, and it's something that we need to immediately fix and reverse. Uh, so that's something that's at the top of my mind. And what that really means is that we're spending more money, but it's going to less companies. And we've taken some steps, not just at DOD, but across the federal government to address those issues, uh, some of which include making sure that we're on-ramping small businesses at a more regular pace onto our contracting vehicles, making sure that we're attracting new entrants and reducing barriers to entry so that companies that want to do business with us or that don't even know how to do business with us can do business with us. Uh, and there's a lot of great work happening in the administration around that. Uh, and it's a big priority of, of ours and, and the president's to, to fix that issue. The other thing that I saw was that DOD, we've got a myriad of small business activities, but not any one place to find them. So we've got small business programs specifically. We've got programs that work with small businesses, but they're not defined as small business programs, but it's hard for industry to know where to go. You gotta go to 10 different websites and see 10 different places for opportunities and info. So I'm working on bringing all of that into a one-stop shop of my office's website, which is business.defense.gov. If you go to business.defense.gov, you will see information on many programs, including our small business programs. You'll see toolkits on how to do business with DOD, and you'll see for in the future, you'll see forecasting information. But we're really molding that site into becoming a place where our industrial base can go and have one place to go to figure out what they need to do to do business with us. And obviously the PTACs are a big part of that. I'm really excited about the work that the PTACs are doing all across the country, but especially with this event where we're gonna have matchmaking uh, with all levels of government. I think that's great. I think there's a federal, well, we know there's a federal government marketplace and we want companies that do business with other agencies and with state and local government to do business with us and vice versa. So I'm really excited to see that but you'll see more on business.defense.gov about that. The other thing that I noticed is we're not planning well at the department for long-term authorization and funding for our small business programs. And that's something that I've been working to fix as well. Uh, my immediate win on that front was making sure that we got our DOD mentor protege program back into the president's budget, uh, which we were successful in doing. And now that program is something that I'm gonna breathe new life into and make sure that we're utilizing it to get new entrants and companies from our socioeconomic categories into our defense supply chain. Uh, but there's other programs, there's SBIR, there's the Rapid Innovation Fund, there's N the National Security Innovation Network and others. And these programs have either short-term authorization or long-term authorization or funding or no funding and I think it's important for the department to plan for our small business programs. So industry knows that there's opportunities that they can tap into to develop, deliver their products and services to us. That's another thing that I've, that I've made a priority. And another thing that I'll just, I'll talk about briefly is cybersecurity readiness. My office set up a, a initiative called Project Spectrum. 
And the website for that is projectspectrum.io. I know when I was in Ohio, I got a lot of questions about cyber readiness and CMMC and how to be ready to do business with the department. Well, I'm happy to say that we did a deep dive into CMMC specifically, uh, which was a, for those of you who don't know, a cybersecurity maturity model that DOD developed to have businesses be cyber ready to do business with us. We did a deep dive and we rolled out a version 2.0, which still needs to go through a rulemaking process. However, it's going to be way more simple for small businesses to comply. Uh, but if you go to my office's program website, and you can find this on business.defense.gov as well, it's called Project Spectrum. We're actually providing free training, free self-assessments, free tool assessments, and in some cases, access to cyber SMEs to help small businesses get ready to do business with the federal government and with the DOD. So I would encourage all of you to visit uh, and, and take advantage of those resources. We're making that investment to buy down the cost for industry uh, from my organization. So I wanna make sure that everybody knows about that and, and, and is taking advantage of it because whether it's CMMC or NIST or any other standard, we all agree, I think, that our networks and our industrial base is at risk from our adversaries and we're seeing IP theft and all kinds of act malicious activity that we need to protect ourselves from and we need to make sure that our industrial base is protect protected as well. So those are a few things going on uh, at DOD and specifically in my organization. Um, look, the, the president signed early in his administration a few executive orders related to supply chain, related to competition, related to equity and inclusion. Uh, and, and small businesses are at the nexus of all of that. And if we're going to rise to the occasion as a nation to meet all of our needs, including our industrial base supply chain and competitive competitiveness needs, we need small businesses. We need you. And our doors are open. My office is, is, is available uh, to work with any of you. Uh, we've got small business offices across all of our military departments and defense agencies. We've got a workforce that's over 750 small business professionals that are working to include small businesses in our procurements every day. So I hope this event is successful for all of you. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. I'm really glad this is happening. And I hope that we can, as was said earlier, do this in person uh, sometime. And I feel like we're hopefully getting closer to that. Uh, but I appreciate the invitation to provide some uh, overarching perspectives. But please visit business.defense.gov and visit projectspectrum.io and take advantage of those resources there. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity and uh, look forward to continuing, Jim, uh, to work with you and, and supporting uh, the work of the PTAX. Great, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mita. Um, again, thanks for taking time out of your schedule, uh, not just for visiting us in person a couple weeks ago, but joining us today. And uh, you're more than welcome to uh, join us here in Ohio in the future. Uh, we think we've got some of the best uh, small businesses in the Department of Defense supply chain. So uh, we're excited about them and, and happy to showcase them and, and help them through uh, some of their challenges as well. Um, next up, we are going to move on to the U.S. Small Business Administration. It's my privilege to introduce uh, Ms. Bibi Hildago, who has been selected to serve as the Associate Administrator for Government Contracting and Business Development at the U.S. Small Business Administration. In this role, Ms. Hidalgo oversees and reviews procurement-related policies for small business contractors hoping to work with the federal government, uh, including woman-owned, veteran-owned, socially disadvantaged, hub zone, and 8A minority business development programs and small businesses. In her role, she was the SBA, uh, in her prior role, she was the SBA government contracting lead policy for the Biden-Harris administration transition team, developing policies that President Biden could execute in his first 100 days with an emphasis on underserved communities. In 2014, Ms. Hidalgo and her brother Patrick Hidalgo co-founded Future Partners LLC, 
which advises Fortune 500 company executives on procurement and minority business strategy and created a model for how to facilitate significant opportunities for both. Uh, prior to that, they were both uh, served at the White House, during which time she managed a government-wide initiative with the 24 cabinet agencies to position the federal government to meet the congressional 23% small business set-aside goal uh, for the first time in nearly a decade. Uh, in addition to her experience, Ms. Hidalgo is a master's in public policy from the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University, and uh, she is dedicating her work to the memory of her brother, Patrick, who passed away suddenly at the age of 41 in March of 2020. Uh, Ms. Hidalgo, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and I will turn it over to you. Good morning, uh, Ohio small business community. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim for the introduction and thank you to SBA District Director Everett Waddell and the whole Columbus District Office for inviting me to speak here today. Uh, special thanks to the Ohio Procurement Technical Assistance Center Network, the Ohio Department of Development for their work in bringing us together so that Ohio small businesses have the opportunity to share their talents, successes, and best practices with one another and with local buying offices. I also uh, want to thank my uh, colleague, uh, Farouk Mita, who um, is truly doing exceptional work at the Department of Defense and has been a, a close partner of ours since we started in this administration. And we're excited about some of the changes that are to come um, in part due to his work from uh, uh, the White House and, and uh, OMB. And finally, thank you to all the small businesses in the audience who are here to learn more about how you can share your products and services with the federal government. You are in engineering, you're in life sciences, you're in IT, construction, and every industry that we as a country depend on for our future. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to speak about how SBA is serving and investing in you in return. Like many of you, I am no stranger to the rewards and the challenges of running a small business. For six years, as Jim mentioned, my brother Patrick and I managed a small firm that connected Fortune 500 companies with small businesses so that the large companies could stay on the cutting edge of innovation and so that the small businesses could create jobs, generate wealth, and invest in their communities. It was during that time that I learned some of the same lessons that I imagine many of you have experienced. I learned just how challenging it can be to grow your business and to get opportunities. But even with those challenges, there is real power that comes with getting to say that the US government is one of your clients. After all, it's the biggest buyer in the world with more than 560 billion in contracting opportunities. That is why after transitioning to my current role with these lessons in hand, I was excited to see how much emphasis this administration has placed on increasing federal contracting with America's small businesses and on delivering for the people whose grit and courage led them down this path of business ownership. President Biden and SBA Administrator Isabella Guzman have laid out a bold vision for the agency to tap into our nation's small business industrial base by investing more resources and contracting dollars into the federal marketplace. They know that you have so much to offer the federal government and that's why it's incumbent upon SBA and my office through policy work in DC and through field work in our district offices in Ohio and elsewhere to widen the doors of access and opportunity for all small firms. The dream of a more equitable economy comes from the top. During the president's speech commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre, he announced an all of government effort to grow federal contracting with small disadvantaged businesses by 50% by the year 2025. That also translates to 50 billion more dollars in contracts directed squarely at building our country and economy back better. And that's 50 billion more dollars meant to empower entrepreneurs from underserved communities to share for our nation's benefit the ingenuity that has always defined America's small businesses. Of course, right now, too many of our small businesses are still struggling. The COVID-19 pandemic and resulting economic crisis had an unprecedented impact on America's small businesses. 
And I don't have to tell you what that devastation looks like. You've experienced it for yourselves in your neighborhoods, in your communities, and possibly even in businesses and families of your own. I feel this pain as a previous business owner and as someone who ex has experienced real loss. As Jim mentioned, in March of last year, I lost my brother, Patrick. Patrick was my little brother, my best friend, and also my business partner. And on the morning of March 1st, when he wrote to me and my siblings and my father and said he wasn't feeling well, none of us could ever imagine that that night when he went to sleep, he would not wake up again. Patrick had a pre-existing condition and we lost him at the age of 41. As we continue to work our way through the pandemic, we have seen how our country can come together and build itself back up. But just as critically, we've seen how both policymakers and everyday people have come to appreciate and prioritize the resilience, agility, and innovation in our national small business community. To that end, my office monitors the progress of 24 federal agencies as they work towards the congressionally mandated goals for small business contracting. This includes for small disadvantaged businesses, service disabled veteran owned firms, hub zone businesses, women owned businesses, and all small businesses. We are the only office within the SBA that has a whole of government approach. Together with our partner agencies that translates to over 130 billion in small business contracts per year. And I ask the question, what other industrialized nation in the world is able to say that? At SBA, we are committed to breaking down historic barriers to capital and opportunity in the federal contracting space. Thanks to the excellent work of field staff in our district offices, like in Columbus, the government has been able to contract with Ohio-based SBA certified small businesses, working on everything from Air Force aerial refueling to COVID-19 emergency response planning. In fiscal year 20, their efforts supported more than 1,800 Ohio small businesses in winning $3.2 billion in federal contracts. Building off those results, this past summer alone, SBA's procurement center representatives, or as I like to call them, our watchtowers, were able to negotiate with contracting officers to create more than one $4 billion in new small business set-asides in Ohio alone. All of these efforts will add up to thousands of new jobs at firms like yours over the next decade. At the same time that we are fighting to improve federal contracting with all smart small firms, we are also working to address other important small business issues of national interest and concern. Thanks to recent initiatives from this administration, we have been leading an agency-wide effort to promote domestic manufacturing in the American supply chain. This new manufacturing hub was first announced by President Biden earlier this summer near Allentown, Pennsylvania. And we've been concentrating our efforts among all the program offices to think through some of the ways that the agency can address the most critical issues that manufacturers are facing today from supply chain disruptions to a lack of stopgap financing to increasingly unaffordable interest rates and repayment terms on the very machinery that small manufacturers need in order to function. Manufacturers in this country are being squeezed from all sides and we have been working every day to find new ideas and possible solutions to these pressing issues. Another way that my office is promoting small business contracting is by working closely with the White House and several federal agencies to reform the current procurement practices around contract bundling, where federal dollars are consolidated until they are no longer within reach for small businesses. We have heard for many months from small businesses across the United States that this practice known as category management presents barriers to entry to the federal marketplace and the numbers bear that out. 10 years ago, when we were doing this work with the Obama administration, the federal government contracted with more than 130,000 
small businesses. Now that number is closer to 87,000. That is a 39% drop over a decade. Over the same time period, there has been a 60% decrease in new small business entrants to federal contracting. SBA and my office have fought for months alongside Farouk Mita and his office at DOD to even the playing field and to make sure that small businesses are given the opportunity to compete and to ensure that federal contracting guidelines for small business set-asides are being followed. We have made our case to the White House and OMB, and we have made significant headway on this issue in the Interagency Committee on Equity. What I can say today is, in the very near future, government contracting officers and acquisition staff will receive guidance that includes a new approach to scoring contracts within category management and to ensure that agencies do not prioritize government-wide contract vehicles that often benefit large corporations at the expense of growing our nation's small business supplier base. These changes will have a direct impact on government contracting with all socioeconomic firms, including service disabled veteran owned firms, women owned firms, SDB and hub zone businesses. Reversing the last decade's trends and revealing this administration's commitment to equity in procurement. Taking a step back from all these efforts and reflecting on the impact they can have on underserved communities, it's remarkable that we have programs like these in the United States in the first place. We are a benchmark for the rest of the world and we set the standard for local, state, and corporate contracting. These programs date back to then Senator Truman and Franklin Delano Roosevelt before him. They understood that we are safer, more prosperous, and more agile as a nation when the government invests not in the same few firms over and over again, but rather when we tap into the wealth of knowledge, creativity, and ingenuity in the small firms that make up our local communities. Right now, like in Senator Truman's time, in this era of bundling and consolidation, we are here to work with the next wave of entrepreneurs hoping to break through to the federal marketplace and work with our agencies in every corner of the country. So I'd like to close by saying our government contracting programs are here to make sure the federal government is able to pursue and capture the tremendous opportunities that come from small business contracting. And events like today It looks like we lost Ms. Hidalgo. Uh, Ms. Hidalgo, if you can hear us again, thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, we'd like to express our deep condolences for the loss of your brother and our gratitude for your ongoing work uh, to keep the procurement marketplace uh, fair and competitive for our small business partners. Uh, and we certainly look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you again so much for uh, sharing your story with us, and uh, we, we look forward to uh, ongoing uh, coordination with you. Thank you. Great. And uh, certainly, uh, last but not least, uh, I would like to, to introduce um, a great partner, a great uh, collaborator and a coordinator of uh, support for small businesses in the state. Um, and that is a uh, uh, someone we're, we're very familiar with here at Development and the Ohio SBDC program. Um, and that is Mr. Everett Woodall Jr., who serves as the District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration's Central and Southern Ohio District Offices. Um, in that role, he oversees the delivery of the agency's financial assistance, technical assistance, and government contracting activities uh, to customers and stakeholders throughout the state. Uh, he joined uh, the SBA after serving as the Regional Director for Sustainable Energy Company in Vermont. Um, prior to that, he worked at the State of Ohio as a Director of Public Affairs and Financial Literacy uh, amongst other things. So um, I would also like to acknowledge that he was recently named to the Association of Ohio Commodores in June of 2019. He uh, holds a bachelor degree in education from Bowling Green, a master's in 
uh, Business Administration from Ohio University and uh, is also a veteran of the U.S. Army. So uh, with that, Everett, thank you for your past service and your ongoing service to the small business community. I will uh, hand it over to you. Jim, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Uh, Bibi, thank you for sharing that obviously very deeply personal um, story. Please accept our condolences uh, and our prayers for you and your family. I, I know how the loss of a, a family member can affect the family. So please accept our condolences and prayers. Um, Lydia and Farouk, thank you both so much for taking time out of your schedules as well as Bibi to be with us. So good morning and welcome to the largest small business to government agency contracting event in the state of Ohio. As Jim indicated, uh, my name is Everett Waddell and I am the SBA Central and Southern Ohio District Director. It encompasses 60 of Ohio's 88 counties. And as you can see, a lot of hard work went into preparing this event. And I wanna thank our partners at Ohio Department of Development, the Ohio PTAC Network, and the Minority Business Assistance Center for their efforts but I'd be remiss if I didn't also uh, thank our staff members, our business opportunity specialists, uh, Shonda Harris and Jill Nagy Reynolds from the SBA Columbus District Office for their dedication uh, to helping prepare uh, small businesses for this event. Uh, events like the Ohio Small Business Matchmaker play an important role uh, in connecting innovative small businesses to contracting opportunities, supporting hundreds of jobs and business expansion. At the SBA, uh, as BB indicated, we understand how important these opportunities are, and we work hard to ensure that that 23% of the US government's contracts are filled by small businesses uh, through set-aside programs. It's important to note, and, I, and I, I've, I've spoke at this event over the last few years, and I like to throw out those dollars, that the federal contracting dollars, so in the fiscal year 2021, more than 4.2 billion federal contracting dollars were awarded to Ohio small businesses. Think about that. 4.2 billion federal contracting dollars were awarded to Ohio small businesses who in turn delivered needed goods, services uh, to some of the agencies you'll meet throughout the event, like the Air Force, uh, DLA, uh, land and maritime, state of Ohio agencies, NASA, among many others. Whether you're trying to win your first government contract or you are experienced as a contractor, the SBA is still here to partner uh, with its partner organizations can be valuable resources. We appreciate your time and hope that you come away from this event not only with new connections, but with the assurance that the SBA and all of the contributing partners are here to help you in seeking the assistance in contracting, access to capital, uh, business counseling, you need to start, grow, or expand your business. I wish you all the very best of luck with your matchmaking sessions, and I hope you enjoy this event. Thank you all so much for being here today. Jim, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Everett. And I owe an apology. I skipped over uh, a very important partner for us. Uh, I, I accidentally went out of order. Um, so I'm very excited to introduce our final speaker, who is an incredibly important uh, individual um, in that, uh, that dollar spend that you heard of uh, contracting dollars with small businesses in Ohio. Um, so I'm very excited to introduce uh, Ms. Patricia Young, the Executive Director of the Air Force Material Command. Uh, as a senior executive of the Air Force Material Command at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, Ms. Young advises the AFMC commander in managing all aspects of the command's mission. Uh, the command employs some 89,000 people, uh, a lot of those here in the great state of Ohio, and uh, manages over $60 billion uh, in, in contracting dollars annually. Um, they execute a critical mission uh, of supporting the warfighter through leading edge science and technology, cradle to grave life cycle weapon systems management, world class development, developmental test and evaluation, and world class depot maintenance and supply chain management. Uh, as the command senior civilian, Ms. Young also advises the AFMC commander on labor union relations and development of the civilian workforce. 
Civilians make up more than 70% of the command, the highest percentage among all Air Force uh, commands, and AFMC employs 40% of total Air Force civilians. Uh, Ms. Young entered federal service in 1985 through the Palace Acquired Career Program with AFMC. Uh, she had many roles uh, within many different directorates and command positions um, at the Department of Defense over that time. Um, and prior to her current assignment, she was the director of Washington Headquarters Services in Washington, D.C. Uh, Ms. Young, again, my apologies for uh, going out of order. I would uh, like to thank you uh, for joining us this morning and uh, definitely thank you for the tremendous participation uh, uh, among your organization in the, this and prior uh, Ohio Business Matchmaker. So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Jim, and uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks to the other opening speakers. Um, it's a pleasure to be here um, at this business uh, matchmaking event, um, the largest type in the state of Ohio. So it's exciting for me to share the AFMC story a little bit and try to make connections between our small businesses and the Air Force Material Command. As Jim noted, um, we are one of the largest uh, major commands in the Air Force, but especially in small business work. Um, with having a budget authority of uh, $67 billion, um, we rely critically on small businesses to help us do our mission. And as Jim noted, um, we do everything from traditional base operations such as paving roads, repairing roofs, um, to leading edge research and development technology. We work on aircraft production, uh, weapon system sustainment. We repair and overhaul things as complex and wide ranging even to the supply chain. Um, within the Air Force, we are the supply chain uh, manager. And so when you think about the Air Force and its global mission, um, not only for the Air Force and Space Force, uh, a huge responsibility. Uh, I do wanna share because this past year, our command small business program set a record of over 9.6 billion in small business awards. All of our socioeconomic program goals set records as well. Uh, for example, we awarded over $3 billion to small disadvantaged businesses. That was an increase of over $650 million from 2020. We also saw tremendous growth in our service disabled veteran owned and women owned small business programs, both exceeding $1 billion in awards. That was a first for both programs. We have set the bar, we went above our goals, and we want to keep working at that. Uh, as Jim noted, uh, Air Force Material Command has a large presence in the state of Ohio. Uh, our Air Force Research Lab, that is the lab for the Air Force and the Space Force. Uh, it's headquartered here at Wright Pat in Dayton, Ohio as is our Air Force Life, Life Cycle Management Center. Um, both of these provide a strong presence in Ohio, but those are only two of our six centers under the AFMC Enterprise umbrella. So while we have a strong presence in Ohio, um, we also would like folks to keep in mind at looking at opportunities at some of our other centers and uh, their locations across the US. We have the Air Force Sustainment Center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We have the Air Force uh, Installation and Mission Support Center in San Antonio, Texas. All of our centers, all six, have very robust small business programs. And any of our Air Force small business professionals attending today can give you more information about um, opportunities, 
at Wright Pat, at any of our centers, they can connect you not only to AFMC, but to the Air Force opportunities as well. Um, I, I'm sure you're aware that um, the Small Business Innovative Research Program, uh, CIBR, has been receiving a great deal of attention. Our Air Force Research Lab has joined with the Air Force Innovation Cell, known as AFWORKS. They have transformed the CIBR program to look at quickly transitioning technologies to meet mission needs. The command awarded 138 CIBR phase three contracts in FY21 alone. This is incredible news for our technology firms attending the event, as well as um, a phase three award is that ultimate achievement within a CIBR program. It means a program office has dedicated scarce funds to the CIBR developed technology, incorporating weapon systems or other capabilities. So I wanna say kudos to all our small businesses pursuing innovative technologies, participating in our CIBR program. And I encourage all of you attending today to connect with our CIBR program via AFWORKS. I will put their uh, link in the chat room um, to make it easier for everyone to remember and have access to. But again, all of our small business folks attending have the information ready to share as well. You know, the Air Force has been a cri critical enabler to the nation's response to COVID-19 pandemic. AFMC has taken the lead in working with the Department of Health and Human Services in analyzing and addressing gaps in our nation's medical supplies and manuf manufacturing industrial base. Small businesses have been critical and a significant contributor to this endeavor, from quickly producing masks to expanding the nation's nasal swabs uh, and COVID test kits. To date, the Air Force has executed 1.8 billion in COVID response spend since the beginning of the pandemic and over 734 million or 40% went to small business companies. So I'm here to say, come do business with us. Um, we wanna connect you to opportunities, not only in Air Force Material Command, but across the Air Force. And as I said, we have small business professionals at each of our six centers. They can link you to opportunities in their locale, and then we can also help you understand the greater Air Force opportunities. So um, take advantage of those individuals in your matchmaking sessions and help them, ask them to help you to identify opportunities. Um, we wanna reach out and share information, help you understand our uh, programs and capabilities. And again, I will put into the chat uh, an email address that goes to a central location so that all our small business people can reach out and have contact with you. Um, as we look ahead, uh, we look at uh, the future and I'm sure as many of you have heard in the news, the defense budget is under tremendous pressure. Um, a flat or no, no growth budget definitely has impact on how priorities are set and how funds are located. 2021 has been a great year for small business and becoming valuable mission partners that we can quickly rely on to deliver the, in the innovation and efficiencies to meet any challenge we have in the Air Force. So I encourage all of our small businesses in attendance today Consider the Air Force Material Command as a potential customer. Come join us, bring your innovation, 
bring your business savvy to our nation's small business powering the greatest air force. I hope you have a good event. I hope you find this valuable as much as we do in making those connections and touch points. So enjoy Jim and the folks. Thank you for this event and thank you for inviting us to participate. Have a good session. Great, thank you so much, Ms. Young. I uh, appreciate your time and participation in uh, our matchmaker today. And uh, again, you've been great supporters of the small business community and we're always excited to see uh, some of the great things happening for small business out of Wright-Patterson. Um, so again, thank you. Um, and to all of our speakers, I think it, it definitely speaks to the focus and support for Ohio small businesses that we had so many senior leaders uh, and executives uh, willing to participate um, and join you in today's event. Um, so again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to our partners for helping to put this event together. To our friends in procurement, uh, we hope you find new vendors. Uh, to our small businesses, we hope that these are conversations that lead to relationships and future contracts. And uh, please know that you have our support. Uh, you can access the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, the Small Business Development Centers, the Minority Business Assistance Centers, SBA programs, uh, these are all tools and resources available to assist you um, as you continue to grow. A couple of quick, uh, very quick um, housekeeping items. So uh, immediately after this, if you've got uh, meetings planned uh, in our first sessions, please log out of Zoom and please know that you are unable to, uh, to not use other uh, video conference apps uh, in the matchmaking platform. Um, if you've got another matchmaker or video conference app open in the background, that's gonna inhibit your ability to use the matchmaking platform and enter your meetings. So uh, please make sure over the course of the day, you are not currently uh, involved in other uh, video conference platforms. Um, if at any reason you have difficulties uh, in your meetings, um, there is a help button that says report issues uh, that will go directly to our nerve center to uh, our support team. They will be there to help you and can go right in and chat with you to find out what the challenge is. Please realize that we're, we're leveraging new technology here um, and that we're all humans and have challenges and things going on in our lives. So it is possible uh, you will have a no-show for a meeting. If that does happen, we will do our best to connect you to make sure information is shared and uh, would encourage you to connect outside of today's matchmaker event. Um, so don't, uh, don't uh, be overly concerned if, if a meeting does get canceled. Um, we will do our best to uh, try to reschedule something or uh, give you the information you need to connect outside of the matchmaker. Um, again, remember meetings are 12 minutes. Uh, so that is uh, uh, not a lot of time to deliver your elevator pitch and ask questions that you need, um, but they are set to 12 minutes and the conference space will close after the end of that meeting. Um, there'll be a three minute period between events for folks to um, log into their next meeting. So uh, we keep this moving, we keep it moving fast and uh, it is a very fast paced event. Um, and so uh, last but not least, again, I wish incredible luck to everyone participating today. Thank you for joining us and uh, please log out of this, this Zoom webinar and go over to uh, the matchmaking platform. Everyone should have received an email uh, over the past couple of days uh, with a lot of details. Uh, and again, that website is Stones River EM backslash event backslash 2020 OBM. Uh, again, check your email if you uh, need additional details. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, happy hunting and uh, much success to you. Thanks.